Hi, okay, so they already introduced me, so we can skip the, my, my own introduction. Okay. okay, so the contents of this presentation will be uh, mainly the goals of the, of the project, of the map narrative, main features, capabilities, uh, what challenge this, the challenges I faced while developing it, uh, and some future plans for, for it. And I will also mention some experiment, experimental stuff that I'm working on in parallel. So basically, I come from Slovenia. I'm a professional software developer. I, I have a long-running love for, for cartography, and the OpenStreetMap project basically enabled me to combine the three things I love, uh, programming, maps, and hiking. Uh, let me just ask you how many of you have uh, heard of Maperito before or used it? Okay, so not, I'm not alone. So I started, for the first project I started uh, that was OpenStreetMap related was uh, SRTM to OpenStreetMap, which basically downloads uh, NASA's uh, digital elevation model tiles uh, and generates OpenStreetMap file from it with uh, relief contours. Uh, then I started my more ambitious project, which was called uh, Cosmos. This is basically a predecessor of Maperitive. It's a desktop application for rendering maps. It also combines certain features from uh, the first project. I also uh, worked on Dr Ground Truth, which I oh, totally forgot to mention in my presentation, which was basically uh, an application for generating Garmin uh, maps from opposite maps. but. Uh, more, I more or less abandoned any work on it because I don't, don't have any time to, to work on several projects. So if anyone's interested in continuing, I can give them the quote. Okay, why I started the Cosmos project two or three years ago, uh, existing solutions for rendering maps like Napnik or Osmo Render were back then were, as far as I'm concerned, were lacking simplicity of use. Uh, and they, they lag the, the images in, in, in terms of when I have an OpenStreetMap XML file uh, and I edit it in JOSM, uh, I want to be able to see the uh, rendering results immediately without any complex installation. Uh, and I also want to have a, wanted to have an application which uh, interactively displays the map and I can change the rules and they uh, render different map. Uh, I also wasn't very satisfied with the uh, basic layer of uh, OpenStreetMap mapnik. It was perhaps too crowded for certain things that I wanted to uh, show on my maps. And I also wanted to have my own project to play with, basically. Uh, why, 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 why I stopped working on Cosmos? Because I... Uh, when I planned next set of features or, or future plans for, for, for Cosmos, uh, I basically uh, discovered that the code was not really up to the job of uh, uh, implementing a very complex or large uh, GUI application. So basically I had to rewrite a lot of the, the GUI code and cer certain the problem is that C sharp libraries uh, and the frameworks are not very. Uh, there, there, there weren't uh, many frameworks that, that could help me implement such a GUI, so I had to basically write most of the code myself. And while then I decided if I had to change all, all of that, I could, I could also change the name and give it something that uh, when it's searching Google, I know that, that I will get my, uh, the first results uh, to the the, the uh, home page, which Cosmos wasn't. Okay, so goals for imperative. First of all, it, it should be simple to use, and yet it should be also powerful enough to render professional looking maps. So it's something similar to what Andy said uh, uh, this morning about uh, Potlatch, I believe. Uh, so simplicity, and yet it should be able to allow you to uh, do complex stuff. So it, 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 the second goal was to have an application that, that would be a one-stop shop for making OpenStreetMaps. 
uh, I didn't want to produce several separate tools that, that, had, that had to be uh, changed together to, to get something. I wanted to have a replication that when, opens, when it opens, it should start rendering and you can click on export and it exports the map. Uh, and also, the things should work out of the box without any settings that the user has to first adjust to, to be able to do anything. So maybe I should start by showing you the, the application in the map editor. Basically, this is the map. Uh, here, left below, uh, is the command line, command prompt, and the log. And this is, what I think, one of the more powerful features of MapEditor because everything can be achieved through the, the command line. The, it currently has around 80 commands, and you can also write scripts, simple scripts in text file uh, that can be executed automatically. Uh, here we have a, a list of layers that, that are currently displayed. We can turn off some of them, and now we have a, so only one. Basically, those two are uh, System layers, which are should, in principle should not be turned off, so I'll, I'll probably uh, in some future version will hide those. Um, by the way, this is running on uh, Ubuntu on Mono. Uh, the guys that, that work on Mono are doing an excellent job, but uh, there are still some differences or, or some shortcomings when when the map editor is rendered uh, running on uh, Ubuntu as opposed to Windows. So when you, for example, when you scroll, you have a dark screen, which I don't know how to fix right now. So what what is shown right now is a simple web map downloaded from the OpenStreetMap server. It's a map -like rendering. You can move, zoom in, zoom out. But if you want to uh, render your own map, you basically have to load uh, OpenStreetMap file or download it from uh, Zappi server. We already did that a moment ago, so we can now show a small piece of uh, rendering, of custom rendering, which is actually imitation of, of Mapnik's uh, uh, style sheet. It's not a one-to-one, 100% one one, 100 uh, imitation, but close enough, I guess. So we are actually looking at the vector map right now, so we can zoom in, zoom out. Um, uh, so the next thing we can do is to change to some other rules, for example, hiking rules. Okay, so it's not running. Yes, now it, it has switched to hiking rules. Uh, Maperica comes with, uh, I think, five or six, five, uh, rules that, that are that are just prepared just for the demonstration so that the user can, can see that, that, that he's able to actually switch uh, the rendering. We can try some other rules. For example, Google Maps. That's something like, that looks like a Google Map. Uh, okay, that's it just for the beginning. Let's see what our slides are. Okay, so main, main features is that we have rendering rules, which are a special uh, domain-specific language. It's not very complicated, but it, I think it, uh, you need to take an hour or so to, to understand uh, how it works. I will, if I have the time, I'll try to show some basics. Uh, the second thing which I already mentioned was uh, is embedded command line interface, which makes uh, which allows you to execute any, anything that MapParity provides can be run through command line interface and some, uh, some common uh, functionality is available, available through the menu. And you can see, for example, if we can now, what could we do? Help. You can get a list of commands You probably won't be able to see it, but there they are. Okay. The, the next uh, important thing is, okay, obviously, we, we can show web maps. Uh, we, my parity comes, oops, my parity comes with five 
uh, web maps that can be shown. For example, we can also show map requests, OpenStreetMap. So, so we can turn this off. So this is map quest uh, rendering. You also get uh, their satellite maps. But we have to, when you have several web maps, you have to turn off all the others because they overlap and you, don't, you, you cannot see them. So that's the right thing. Okay, and uh, one of the cool, cool things, I think, is the integration with CERT, uh, NASA's uh, digital elevation models, which came, the code came from, from my first project. You can generate contours, you can generate uh, hill shadings, uh, hypsometric coloring. I'll try to run it now, but I hope it will work, because a few days ago the NASA server wasn't available. They, they moved all the, the high, they've hidden all the files. Okay. I lost it. Okay, we'll try to generate hue shading. So right now it's contacting the server and downloading the files. Let's see if, if it works. Okay, so now we have the hue shading effect. You can zoom in. And you can basically overlay it uh, below the, either the web map or the uh, or the your, your own rendering. Okay, so we now have our own map, our, our own Google-like style uh, hue shading map, which we can switch to hiking because it probably looks better. And you can also generate uh, contours. If you run it through a menu, then it uses the default, I think it's 20 meters uh, interval, but you can specify it, uh, your custom settings through the command line. So there it is. Uh, one of the features that I, I, have to, I have to implement in the future is showing the labels, of the, uh, the height labels of the controls. This is one of the features I plan to do. Okay. So, uh, one of the next thing that you can do with it, you can generate tiles uh, that you can uh, run on your, on your web server. Uh, it's not as uh, fast as, as Mapnik, and it, uh, the, the, the main, uh, I would say, um, uh, problem is that you only, the, the right now, the, um, Maparity works by, uh, is only by loading the XML file in memory. So there's a limit of how, how big an area or how big a map you can load, or limited by, by your uh, memory and by your CPU. Uh, so basically, the tasks you, you can generate only you can generate tasks for smaller areas. If, for example, you cannot load, or it, it would be very difficult to load the uh, extract of the whole Germany and render it. Even if you did manage to load it in memory, it would be too slow to, to run it as a single uh, file. But this is something that I plan to uh, work on in the future through support for uh, post GIS or uh, spatial light. And you can, the last thing, important thing is that you can, gener that you can export uh, these maps to a bitmap. Find okay. or through uh, SVG, both as for Inkscape or, or for Adobe Illustrator. And this is because they are separate because the Adobe Illustrator actually has a very lousy support for uh, SVG and has certain bugs which uh, I needed to s find a workaround. And the SVG generated for uh, Adobe Illustrator is, is different than the one for Inkscape. 
and the problem is that the, the one generated for Adobe Illustrator doesn't work well in Inkscape, so you have to have separate uh, formats. Okay, some basics about the rendering rules. So, as I said, it's a simple text file. Uh, it consists of two main parts or three main parts. Uh, the first part is specifying the features that you want to render. And the second part is specifying how you want to render those features. So in this case, for example, you specify that the, uh, the country boundary uh, is defined as a, a boundary the administrator tag and, oops, and uh, both either admin level two or admin level four. And in this case, we didn't want to include uh, coastline as uh, state border because some some countries or some mappers include this when they uh, tag things. And then once you specify the feature, you use the, the you use the, the feature name in the target. For example, in this case, we we are saying that any feature that starts with airway line, uh, notice the uh, wildcard here, will be covered will be covered by, by this the rendering rule. Uh, the target or the rule consists of, of uh, sequence of commands, and you also have conditional uh, processing. For example, first command defines uh, the minimum zoom uh, level that the feature will be uh, visible at. And the second uh, is the, the color of the line, in this case, or HTML color. And now we have a conditional processing. In case the, the feature that we specified uh, is uh, runway, it will be uh, the, the line width will be, will be different than for other airway features which are not runways. Um, those line widths, the, this format, for those of you that already used Cosmos, uh, it's probably familiar. Basically, you, for, you can specify different uh, widths for different uh, zoom levels. Uh, and my operator then calculates the actual width by interpol uh, interpolating between uh, the known points. So for in this case, we have a width of one for nine, zoom level uh, nine and uh, width of 20 for zoom level 15. And the next, uh, the, the last command is obviously draw a line. Okay, so as, as I already mentioned, uh, everything is available through the command line. Uh, the common functions are available through the GUI. GUI. Here you have a uh, sample uh, mapparity script. It clears the map, uh, uh, hides the, uh, the grid, loads the uh, certain rules for rendering, then loads the uh, OSM data for Dublin, sets the boundaries uh, for exporting to bounding box, and exports the file, uh, the SVG, uh, for zoom level 16 using the Illustrator. Uh, mode of compatibility. So the, the writing script is not, nothing, nothing really difficult. Once you see the commands that are executed when you run a menu, because everything that you run through a menu is also shown as a command in the command log, you can, all, you can just copy paste it into your own file and uh, run it. Here are some samples of renderings. This is a hiking map uh, of certain uh, uh, lake in the Alps, Al I already forgot what the name was, something with a B stuck. Uh, the digital elevation mo model here, shown here is actually not NASA's, it's uh, from Viewfinder. Viewfinder, it's a site uh, that has some advanced or uh, how should say, uh, corrected or uh, uh, digital elevation model with, with better precision. Uh, you, can, you can use it uh, as a custom digital elevation model in Maperative. You have to download it manually and place it in a certain directory and then uh, tol tell uh, Maperative to use it. This is a city map of Dublin, which I 
did for a customer. One of the problems, one of the features that I need to implement is uh, uh, detection of uh, label overlaps uh, and also detection of duplicate labels. This is one of the features I plan to do uh, in the near future. Uh, this is just to show uh, what you can do with the di uh, digital elevation model. This, this is uh, actually composite of two uh, generated images. One is the hypsometric uh, rendering, this meaning the color colors change with the, with the elevation. And the other is uh, hill shading. This white uh, stuff here is not snow. It's actually data voids in the NASA's uh, SAR-10 as SRTM digital elevation model, which is one of the biggest problems in using it, especially in Alps. This is uh, just to show uh, non experimental uh, rendering style of uh, Dublin in its vicinity. And this is basically just to show how that, that you can render something that resembles Google Maps and then, then export it to, for example, SVG and have a printing quality of uh, the style. Okay, the challenges. The first challenge when rendering, uh, when developing desktop application for rendering maps is the compromise between uh, interactivity, the quality, and the quantity, meaning uh, you want to have uh, the map rendered immediately without any delay because it's a desktop application and user expects it. You, have, you want to render it uh, with quality. And on the other hand, you uh, want to, to, to be able to render as big a map as, map, uh, a big, as, big a map as possible. There are certain things that I had to implement to be able to to get certain results for this level of uh, this size of the map. Uh, the biggest problem will be probably how to implement the, the uh, database support uh, because uh, fetching the data from the database will be too slow to be able to render things interactively uh, without some, some sort of caching of the data from the database. Uh, my intention is to uh, use the di direct uh, OS OpenStreetMap database uh, schema, not, not something that, that, that is pre-processed like, for example, Matlab does, because I believe that it would be easier for, for users to then to, to change the, the stuff without having to have a certain uh, intermediate step before rendering. Uh, one thing that, that could Im improve the rendering speed on, on Windows is uh, rendering it using direct 2D. I already did some code for that, but there are some problems and some instability which I need to work on in the future. Uh, the next problem is how to ac actually extract, ac extract information from the data. Right now, uh, first of all, OpenStreet data in, in, in terms of nodes, ways, or relations is actually pretty raw. Uh, if you want to render something with a quality, uh, map with a quality, you, ha you have to pre-process the data before rendering it. If you just have a renderer that directly uh, uh, uses nodes or ways and renders it as lines, you will sooner or later have problems with rendering streets uh, or certain other things that I will mention uh, later. Uh, and one, one of the problems is with the current rendering style sheet that my operative uh, uses is a poor support for OpenStreetMap relations because relations can be uh, very complex and it's very difficult to, in, to write that down in uh, the language that uh, my operative now uses and I want to avoid really implementing my own complex language. So I'll, I, I am thinking about uh, different kinds of solutions for this problem. One of the problems, for example, uh, by what I mean uh, with raw data and pre-processing is password relations. Uh, 
one uh, certain way, opposite uh, map way uh, can can have multiple re uh, relations uh, attached to it, multiple bus route relations that attached to it. On the other hand, uh, each relation ha can have multiple ways. And now when, when you want to render a bus map that renders uh, the bus network, uh, you need to basically uh, Merge certain things together. You have to create a graph of, of the of the uh, the relations, and that is something that it, that will be difficult to uh, implement in a generic way through a uh, through a certain language like MapParity style sheet. So the possible solution is to extend MapParity with Python, and uh, basically leave the users uh, to write those things themselves through a certain toolkit. The next example, uh, which I think you, are, you should be familiar with, is this problem with trans transparent band uh, state boundaries on OpenStreetMap and uh, SMAP, because they're transparent, and each level of boundary, uh, admin level 2 or admin level 4, is rendered separately. You, actually, you can actually see that uh, there, there are overlapping types of boundaries, boundaries uh, uh, drawn, and the, the tra transparency becomes more and more, um, the, the color of transparency becomes more and more intense, so you can see that something is not right. So this is one, one of the reasons I think the data needs to be pre-processed in a certain way to, to be able to avoid uh, such problems. Okay, this is... Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. okay, I already mentioned what, what are some certain solutions for this problem. Um, and I, as I said, I, I hope uh, extended, uh, extending uh, MapParity with uh, Python will be something very, very useful for, for rendering. And then the third parties could write their own plugins. Uh, already mentioned detecting overlaps or duplicates of labels. This is something, as I said, uh, I intend to implement in the near future. Support for shape files, for geo tips. Uh, I'm, already, I'm already working for, uh, on support for other map projections and the ability to rotate the map. Um, Headless mode, this is something that a lot of users requested. Uh, the ability to run this, the MapParity script without the, the GUI uh, GUI actually loading, uh, uh, showing on, on, the, on the screen. So you can run it you know, on the backend server. Multi-core task generation, right now task generate only on one thread, so this is a performance issue. There are some other things but I will not bore you with it. Uh, so these are two experimental things that I worked on. Uh, first is uh, gen exporting the uh, map in a 3D format, in a Collider format, which you can load in uh, 3D programs, and exporting the map to uh, Raphael JavaScript code, which you can show uh, on, uh, on the web browser client side. These are some screenshots from uh, from my experiment with the same lake uh, generating 3D maps. Uh, the program is SketchUp, Google SketchUp. That we, it actually takes a very long time to load. Uh, this feature is already implemented, but I haven't released it yet. It will be probably in, in a few months or maybe even in a month. This is taken from some from the other side. So basically, what what it, what, it, what this is is the map that you render it as a bitmap uh, is is an overlay over over the uh, 3D generated um, terrain map, which is also from viewfinder's uh, data. So. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. And now we have about 10 minutes left for questions and discussion. Anyone? Yeah, over there. 
Um, how good is it at um, wondering coastlines now? I, I recall that was a bit difficult before. Uh, haven't done any work on that. It's basically you have if you have a, an extract uh, extract that doesn't have the coastline extended to the boundary box. Uh, apparently, will have problem with the rendering. So this is one of the things that I also need to work on. So more questions. Uh, I see it that in Aperitive you're using line offsetting, so rendering a line not uh, right on the way, but let's say 10 pixels next to it. Um, one problem with that, I've heard the mapping guys are having a hard time with it, uh, is how to render that uh, that way when two ways, uh, that line when two ways meet at let's say a sharp angle or at a, at a shallow angle. How do you handle that? I lost a, a month of my life uh, coding that solution and I'm still not satisfied. I'm, I'm still finding bugs and almost every day uh, I have to release a new, new bug fix release for, for it because the actual line offsetting algorithm is very complex. It, it seems simple when you start but when then you start reading, first, first, first you start implementing your own solution and you see that it has a lot of breaking points. Then you start reading uh, various articles, scientific articles. You try several approaches. None of them works, or it's very poorly uh, uh, documented. Uh, uh, the last uh, algorithm I settled on was GrassFire, uh, if you are familiar with. You basically generate a straight skeleton of the polygon, and then, then you move the lines according to the skeleton. But the problem is that it's numerically problematic in certain cases because of the floating point uh, imprecision, um, the algorithm breaks down. So right now it seems to be working more or less, but uh, if you have a very large offset, then you, you, you can have loops and other, other problems. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's one more question. Have you got any plans to uh, um, render on the client side and uh, maybe also have the client download the OSM data um, directly himself to speed up the process of rendering maps? Uh, you mean on the client side? Uh, like if, if you would like to have it online, so like people could offer an online platform running imperative and somehow like that the client does not have to install imperative himself on the desktop. I, I didn't really understood. <laughs> uh, cr currently, my imperative is only uh, installed on the desktop client. Is yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And do you have any plans of maybe just having it usable by a web browser and then still do the rendering on the client side? You mean the rendering through a web browser or downloading the, the, the tiles from the, 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 from the server? No, yeah. I mean, what I understand is if I want to offer a map based on imperative on a web server, I have to like completely render as PNG or SVG, and then the clients can download the SVG. But would it be possible to have like a solution that the client, that the user does not have to install imperative on his desktop, but still use it? The only solution I uh, currently see is uh, delivering it, uh, delivering the, the rendering through uh, JavaScript. The, something I mentioned before, uh, the uh, the export to, to Raphael GIS uh, rendering, but it's it's not the same. It wouldn't be the same. It's not the, the, the browser rendering does, doesn't ha doesn't have the, the level of quality that you can achieve uh, if you run it on the desktop. Okay, thanks. Are there more questions? So then I'm interested in uh, one more thing. Uh, we just had the talk about the Mapnik Meta Writer stuff. So is something like that possible with your program as well, or are there any plans to support that? I think the closest uh, thing that uh, that you can say that's, sim that's similar to that would be that exports to Raphael.js because you gen basically generate 
map data, then the browser renders it. And you can also add uh, uh, met metadata data like uh, other tags that you can pull, uh, that you can query through a web browser. Okay. So then this session is concluded with that. Thanks again to the, the speaker, please.